All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about textbooks and OER just in general first uh, because obviously it's kind of a hot topic right now and there's a lot going on with it. So there is a difference between you can have a class um, completely free. There's different ways to do that. You could have a textbook that we consider low cost. Um, different ways to do that as well. Uh, for example, I actually got an email this morning from I think a small publisher saying, hey, you know, do you want a low cost textbook for your class? This one's 1995. So I think they're starting to catch on. I think some of these publishers are starting to catch on and we're going to start seeing, you know, emails with, hey, do you want to see my our textbook that's, you know, reasonably priced for your students. So I think that that's a, a good way to start if you're interested in you know, absolutely I have to have a textbook, like I want an actual book, um, you know, you can request those examination copies of things that are a lot lower priced and um, when you, you can get them and check them out. So that's one way um, to save our students some money. Uh, and I think we're going to, we do have an OER committee here at YC and we're trying to talk to faculty about, you know, trying to move to those more lower cost textbooks and I think we're Right now, defining low cost is under fifty dollars. Um, so that is one way to go. If you're, you know, just adamant that hey, I have to have a textbook, well, maybe take a look around because now they are starting to come out with some that are a little bit more reasonably priced. Um, as far as um, um, complete OER, so I took one of my classes and turned it into an OER class, and this is the class I did. This is basically English one hundred and two but this is the honors version. And so I teach this class in person and online. So some of what I have to show here is also what I'm doing in person. This class is, I guess, I don't know, I want to say it was easy to turn it into an OER, but I felt it was my easiest one to do because it's literature based. And as you know, million poems, short stories, books are free on the internet, right? So beyond that, it was just coming, coming up with the, co the content of what I wanted the students to, what, what would they normally read in a textbook besides these, these stories or these poems? So one of the easiest ways that I, that I was able to do this is to take my own PowerPoint presentations that I use in my regular in-person classes and put those up here. Right? If I'm talking about how to analyze a text, I have a PowerPoint on that, so I can put that in my online class. Um, the student can use that as what I would normally see in a textbook. Um, they, also, um, they also really like media, right? And I, I like to break things up. I don't like just constant reading. There are so many great videos on how to read literature, how to write, how to write a thesis, right? So I incorporated videos as well. I did a lot of videos. So I'm just going to show you um, my modules page. Um, so for example, these uh, are, sh are poems that are free online. And if you're concerned about using a link, uh, Canvas does have an option that allows you to run a check to make sure the links are still valid. So you can do that. And kind of like what Andrew was saying, I have discussion questions. So then my discussion questions would be about um, those poems. So the reading and the videos for this for week one were how to effectively read a nonfiction text. And so that was a video. Um, what makes a poem, how to read poetry. So you can see that these are videos I used. And then these are the actual poems and the links to the poems. And that's what I essentially what I did for week one. Uh, and the content in those videos is similar to what I used to see in the textbooks, right? How do you read a poem? Okay, so that's one way that I was able to take it from a textbook to uh, no textbook. Again, I use a lot of my own materials. You probably have worksheets, you have PowerPoints, any of those that you can use in your course to help supplement is fantastic. I think, uh, I think it was Jared, maybe, he spent his Christmas break writing his own textbook. But it, he said it was easy for him because he already had that, he already had so many, you know, worksheets and content in his files. So that's um, another way that you could go about it if you want to do your own, if you want to write your own textbook. 
It's the same thing. Um, the readings are mostly things that either that I've written or that are videos. Um, and then the, the discussion questions for my online class and obviously my in-person class, we would discuss what we had read. And um, the, the, when I started going over the writing process, I made a PowerPoint. So I used that PowerPoint in lecture format in my in-person classes and then I put it online as well. Because if you think about it, we really should be, you know, doing, having the same rigor, doing the same thing in, in an online class or an in-person class, right, no matter the modality. So why couldn't you use those for both situations? Um, so that's the basics of how I was able to do that. Now, I think for some of my up, other upcoming classes, it might be a little more challenging because, for example, for English 101, we teach three different types of writing. Like we teach an argumentative and a narrative. And um, I noticed, I looked up Maricopa, uh, the Maricopa Community College System had a huge grant called Maricopa Millions where they developed all these OER classes. So I've looked at theirs, their English classes, and they use a lot of links, a lot of links to different, you know, it's all link based out into the world of what's already written. And that's fine. I, I know some people may not like that. I was okay with it looking through it. Um, so you kind of just have to find what works for you, what works for your discipline and your class, and also kind of what fits, I guess, your personality, um, right? Because some, some people like still going through textbook and that's okay. And so there's different, uh, you know, ways to go about it. This is just what I found worked for this specific class. Um, my other classes, like I said, I may try just a low cost textbook or I might try writing my own textbook. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. I teach uh, technical writing and we looked and we couldn't find a good OER technical writing textbook. So we had to use a more traditional one. Uh, I think we did get it around $50. So those are just, you know, obstacles, obviously, that are going to come up. But um, it really depends on the class and you as an instructor. So that is what I have, but I'm completely open to questions. I know it's kind of this huge thing I've had to educate myself on the last couple months. <laughs> so I, I have a question. Sure. Um, I love providing free things for students and I, and I incorporated it into several classes. In one class I used a lot of links with videos. Mm -hmm. um, have you received any feedback from students in regard to your videos and surveys? Um, no, and I, this is the first class that I've done and I piloted, so I'm going to send out a survey. Um, and, but in the past, even when I used a textbook, I did video, I took videos of myself saying, you know, mm -hmm. hey, this is what it means to analyze a text, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, yeah, so I don't see how that would be any different than another professor online mm -hmm. saying, you know, there's some really great videos of professors analyzing short stories that we read in our classes, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to reinvent the will and record myself. Mm -hmm. um, as far as do the students, you know, watch them, do they like them, I haven't gotten feedback yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so that will be interesting. I mean, obviously, in my in-person class, they were so excited that I wasn't going to have a textbook. They were thrilled, right? But um, I've also, because of that, are they going to watch it? I've had, I have added a little more assessments. Um, even if they're just like fun cahoots or whatever, I have added assessments to make sure that they, you know, watch the video or, or read whatever I handed out um, that I had written. That I just I did have to add some assessments because just because I was this was a newer thing and I wanted to make sure that it was working. Yeah, um, and also I do give them some of them the option. There are some short stories, and this actually helps for um, students with disabilities. There's some short, a lot of short stories that we read in our class that are read on YouTube, and so those students can actually listen to it. Um, and I tell them to annotate and take notes while they're doing it, but sometimes it helps them to actually hear it as opposed to. Just reading it. It's not just students with disabilities. That'll help any student. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah. 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 And so, and I, again, with that, I'm really big on you need to take notes, you need to annotate, and we talk about that. Um, the other way, otherwise, you're just passively reading or passively listening to a video. Yeah, I, I like the um, extra assessments. Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, there's a world of, you know, companies now that are offering OER at low cost. I had just started researching them, so I don't know a lot about them, but I know one of my colleagues uses Lumen for her English classes. It's L-U-M-E-N. 
Um, we, I've seen, I think I've looked at OpenStax. I've looked at the Canvas Commons, what's already up there. So it does take time to kind of go through, and that's the hard part, right? You gotta take this time that you don't have to do this research, but you would still be doing the same thing if you ordered a bunch of examination copies and you were reading through all those, right? So it, it's work, but uh, I think it's well worth it. I'm really happy with how it's going. My students seem to appreciate it. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like they actually are more engaged, because even when we had the textbook, it was so hard to get them. Or towards the end of the semester, they'd be like, I didn't even use this. I mean, well, why not? Like, you know, I assign things from it. <laughs> so uh, I've actually kind of found that this system has worked a little bit better for me and my students this semester. Scottsdale Community College, I'm, I do math, so mm -hmm. they have open educational resources for math and every single unit online has videos. So you can print out the textbook mm -hmm. for free and there's accompanying videos wow. for every single lesson. It is gorgeous. That's neat. Boom. Yeah, wow. well done. That is really neat. Yeah. So our program uses that. Yeah, and I do know, so, you know, some students like to print, so I do offer to print materials if they want or, um, you know, I try to be cop careful because of the copyrights, but you know, the majority of them really, of my students for my English classes do not want printed copies. Mm -hmm. They just, they, even if I gave them a printed copy, they're gonna go online and read it. That's mm -hmm. what I've noticed is happening this semester. So I kind of, I stopped, at the first I was kind of voluntarily printing stuff, but it didn't seem to, they really cared much about it. I'm involved in an educational group in a virtual environment, uh -huh. and they actually have a whole uh, virtual library community, and they're taking some of the readings that you have, and they're offering them in digital. Oh, that's format. really neat. Yeah, and I know, and I've heard our library here will help you if you want to use resources from the database and train, like get them into your class so that those materials are there as opposed to a textbook, they'll help you with that. That's what I've heard. I haven't done it yet. but So yeah, I think that's a great, I mean, think about how many great articles are in our databases. Um, I know Andrew was talking about, you know, de uh, debates. In my English 101, we do, you know, we do debates. There's a great website. It's like, I think it's the ProCon, ProCon and it shows you all the reasons for and against an issue, right? And it has all these supplemental materials. So my students can go on there and use that um, as opposed to a textbook. So we, because we've used that last semester when I'm still trying out the textbook thing. So yeah, so there's a lot of great, really great resources like both of you have said. I think again, it's a matter of finding the time to, it, it's a lot of work, right? I had, a, this class was already done, I was thinking about trying to QM it, and I was like, you know, I think before I do a QM, I really would like to move it to OER. So um, this is, I, it's been a lot of work trying to get it to that place. So, so, yeah, I think what you said about uh, maybe this is more engaging to students in some way because there's not a traditional textbook. Could you? Talk a little bit more because that's a very provocative and interesting idea. Right. And why, I, is, why would that be? You know, I think that it's like anything, right? You, if you have five textbooks for all your classes, you, you, you're going to start passively reading, right? You're going to get kind of tired of that modality. Um, so I think just kind of mixing it up helps, right? Hey, you're going to watch a video and you're going to read something and then you're going to do. You know, and just making it so that it's not the same kind of mundane thing. And, that, and also, I think it right, works your brain differently, right? We have that whole different type of learners. Uh, some people learn well, you know, from reading. Some people learn well from listening. We have those different learning. I don't know a lot about that. <laughs> that uh, it's not much of my background, but I, I've heard a little bit. And so I think it might be that, too, just, you know, working your brain and, uh, maybe Andrew would more, know more, but um, I just find that kind of, and I think in an in-person class, we kind of already do that, right? We lecture, we do group work, we, we do these different activities, so why not find a way to kind of do those online rather than, hey, here's a textbook, and you're just going to read and keep reading and answer questions, you know, and a lot of them I was finding weren't reading, right? And then by the time we'd get to the essay, they weren't, they weren't as strong in their writing as my in-person students were. 
So I was trying to figure out well, what else could I do to help them through that and to get them that content, that knowledge that they need to move forward in that activity. And I have one more question. Okay. <laughs> Just thinking about you said you did look for a kind of a textbook replacement among OER mm -hmm. materials that might out be out there. Do you think um, that at least maybe in your discipline that the OER is is still not up to the quality of traditional textbooks? I myself have have not found that as I've been doing research, but my, some of my colleagues have, for sure. So I've had some colleagues that are like, hey, I'm not, I'm just gonna keep using the textbook because they're, I haven't seen anything I like, which I get. So that's why I'm hoping that as this movement continues that there will be more. And, and I would love to, we talked about this in my department, I'd love to, well, let's write our own textbook for our department because then we own it, we can edit it, you know, but again, that takes a lot of time, funds, the school may not have. Um, so. It, that it, it's hard because it does take a lot of time and I think and I know faculty their time is valuable right and so if they don't see any if they're looking through a couple of OER sites and they don't see anything they're like yeah I'll just keep using the textbook um, which I get so that's why I think it's also as I said at the beginning it's also important to just be looking at those examination copies because I think a lot more publishers are getting on board so if you really are a like hey I'm just gonna keep a textbook at least consider looking at some of the ones that are lower costs that they're now coming out with because they're going to have they're competing you know they're going to they're now competing with the OER movement so I think they're they're working it out they're realizing that they're going to have to step it up in this area yeah. um, and some of my colleagues also said hey you do the you redo the research or bring it to me and I'm interested and I'm fine with that because mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about this topic and we have, I'm on the committee. Uh, but I know that you know some of them just they, they don't want to be the one that has to find that material. Would you um, allow us access to your class? Sure. Possibly. Yeah, I think I have. Um, I can. I am. I can copy it into. I A we have. I have a blueprint course. Yeah. 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 Sure. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Sure. And what I did is uh, Thatcher said that I could just create a blank shell for myself and I would download mm -hmm. other canvas shells, the OER ones, just to see what they were like and that's I started looking at some of those. So that's one way you can look at other ones too. It's kind of a pain because I, I was like, oh, you just can't go in and look at the course. You actually have to download it. Mm -hmm. um, but it does give you some ideas of how other instructors, especially the ones at Maricopa, are doing it. Yeah, my, my topic's a little limited when mm -hmm. I'm out searching. Mm -hmm. You know, for OERs. What's your video game development? Oh, yeah. That's so it, it, I'm take that. more, it's very limited what I can find. Right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So you might consider writing your own textbook. You might consider. I have for two classes. Yeah. 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 Or you know, finding a low cost textbook or, or that could be just a su supplement, a handbook that's a supplement or something. Yeah, but I, like I'm that. really liking your your. Um, the way you have this set up, I, I have two more that I want to get rid of the textbook, and I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And, and I really like how Yeah, it took me some time, and I like things simplified. I don't want my mm -hmm. students to go into their online class and feel super overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have all, like, the weekly readings and videos in the same, like, area, and then the discussion, you know, so they know. And that's, it's the same format pretty much for every week, and so they know what to expect on a weekly basis. Um, and we, so we start with discussions. We do get later into uh, having to do you know, like grade book assignments. Um, you know, uh, pe I think we did some, yeah peer editing on our discussion board. But for the most part, each unit looks the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I do poetry, I do short <clears throat> stories, and then I do a novel. Right. So in each unit, you're watching videos, you're reading, you're answering discussion questions. You know that. So they kind of get used to. My, my class and how I run it and, and the online LMS system. And this is my homepage is this was Karen Palmer, she QMs her classes. Originally this is how her homepages looked, so I copied it. I think she has since changed them to make to simplify it even a little more, but I'd be happy to give you um, um, 
access to my mm -hmm. blueprint shell. And I know she will too. Okay, well, Sandy, thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're welcome.